Now we're going to look at the example of this graph right here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and graph the slant asymptote. And as you can see, we found our slant asymptote to be x is equal to 1. So I'm going to come in here and dash in this. If you notice, this is obviously different than uh, the asymptotes we were dealing with before because those were horizontal or vertical lines. This time we have a line uh, that has a slope other than 0 or undefined. And what we're going to do now is we're going to find some other points that we can use. Uh, like we talked about, there will be no horizontal asymptote, uh, but we do have a chance for a vertical asymptote. So our vertical asymptote is going to be x is equal to 1. So we'll go ahead and dash that in also. x is equal to 1, nice little vertical asymptote. And again, uh, because we have one vertical asymptote, it's going to divide our graph into two parts. Basically the part that's to the left of the vertical asymptote and the part that's to the right of the vertical asymptote. So we're going to have to try some numbers uh, in both those sections to figure out what we're going to get. Uh, a couple other things we can find real quick is plug in 0. This will give us our y-intercept. We'll get 1 over negative 1, so that'll be a negative 1. So we'll see if we can't graph that. 0 comma negative 1 will be right there. And then aside from that, uh, there will not be any uh, x-intercepts, and the reason that I can tell you that is because when I set my numerator equal to 0, both of those are imaginary. But we still need to find some other values, so we'll go ahead and make a little table and just plug in some x's. So right now we know this point right here, so I'm going to try plugging in, say, negative 1 and maybe negative 5 and just figuring out what's going on, maybe even negative 6, we'll see. If I plug in negative 1, I will get 2 over negative 2. So when I simplify that, I will get uh, negative 1. And let's go ahead and plug in negative 6 and we'll see what we get. When we do that, we'll get 36, uh, 37 on the top, over negative 7. So when you divide those, obviously it'll be negative 7 will go into that 5 times. So 5 and 2 sevenths, I believe is what it is. So we plugged in negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 2 sevenths. So again, we probably have enough points to be able to help us out. Uh, our concept is that as you approach your vertical asymptote, you either go to positive or negative infinity. So uh, we're going to assume, since we can't cross the x-axis, I mean the uh, vertical asymptote, that's what's going to happen. Now, the slant asymptote is going to have characteristics very similar to the vertical or the horizontal asymptote. And what that means is as x goes to positive infinity, you should approach the asymptote from one side or the other. So what our graph is going to look like on this side is going to look a little bit like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and see if we can't figure out what other values will be. So I'm going to plug in, say, 2, 3, and then some other number that's larger. When I plug in 2, I will get 5 over 1. So that, of course, will be 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to go ahead and plug in 3. That'll give me 10 over 2, which is also 5. And then we'll plug in some number that's larger, say, I don't know, uh, 8. If you plug in 8, it will give us 65 over 7. If we divide those, you'll get 9 and then 2 sevenths, maybe. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2. So our graph will look a little something like that. And again, the concept is, is as we approach this asymptote, we either need to get a positive or negative infinity. And then it should approach the asymptote as it goes to, as x gets larger and larger and larger. So that's the graph of our slant asymptote.